Greeting friends, family members, fellow Rotarians, Path of Hope and volunteers. To you who know, don't know me, my name is Rebecca Tolstoy. I'm a Perth Rotarian since 2011 and the founding chair of the project Path of Hope, breaking the intergenerational cycle of family violence. I was given the advice to write a blog for Path of Hope by Abigail Coleman, a young woman who has been volunteering with Path of Hope since 2019. She started as an intern when she studied marketing and law at Curtin University in Western Australia. Abby still volunteers with Path of Hope and as the marketing wish she is, I thought I'd better listen to the advice given by both Abby and Sebastian Turand, another former intern still volunteering with us. Abby and Seb have encouraged me for years to write in my own words and voice, sharing the Path of Hope journey. Being born and raised in Sweden, having English as my second language, despite being a Tolso, writing is a little lower on my skill scale than I think these blogs deserve. So a small caveat for all the English teachers and grammar nuts, please put on a pink pair of goggles if you decide to read on, as this blog will be riddled with Swinglish, Swedish English. Uh, far from perfect, but all for progression. Here goes. First blog, 7th November 2021, Perth, Western Australia. I'm excited to share some great news I have witnessed on a trip last week to the Salvation Army's refuge in Karatha, Western Australia. This trip has been many years in the making and finally the day arrived. When I woke up on Wednesday the 3rd of November 2021, I felt giddy and excited for many reasons. Firstly, to be able to visit the Karatha refuge for the first time. Secondly, to visit the city of Karatha for the first time. Thirdly, to actually be on the plane again. However excited I was about all of this, I believe my darling son, 23-year-old Maximilian, were the happiest to finally have mum on the road out of the house again even if only for a few days. As I'm riding in an Uber on my way to Terminal 4 from Perth to, Kara to Karatha in Western Australia, I reminisce back to the first trip with Path of Hope, which was to Sydney, a Rotary Conference for District Governors from around Australia and New Zealand, with my magical, brilliant, super smart, professional, kind, passionate mentor, Mr John Garland AM. This then led me to think about everyone from the peeps in Perth to the Rotarians around the world making the rollout of Path of Hope possible. The many trips to the UN in Geneva, Switzerland, the White House in Washington, DC, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, where I visited Atlanta Rotary, Roswell Rotary Club and many others, UN Rotary New York, the vocational training team with Sergeant Hagen from the Western Australian Police Force and five more magical members where we knowledge share from Los Angeles to Las Vegas this was funded by the Rotary Foundation. Also Stockholm, Sweden, Svedala, Sweden, Bangkok, Thailand, Canberra, Melbourne, Sydney, Darwin, a little town in Queensland, Australia, and many, many more places. How fortunate I am, and every Rotarian, to be able to volunteer and provide service to our local, national, and international communities at our Rotary Clubs, through our Rotary Clubs. How rich we are with opportunities to support, help, advocate for people who need a hand up. My passion for volunteering is in the space to support women and children experiencing family violence. Together with my fellow Rotarians, also volunteers, as we support the Salvation Army who own, operate refuges and services that su support their clients, the women and children experiencing family violence. Thank you to every single one of the 1.2 million Rotarians in the 35,000 clubs in the 210 countries around the globe for being members of Rotary and choosing service above self, which makes projects like Path of Hope possible. Thank you. Thank you for being you. Well, I got quickly jolted out of my reminiscing as I arrived to Terminal 4 as I started the walk toward the check-in. I checked around and everyone was wearing a mask. Geez, Louise, Becky, I thought to myself, it's COVID time. Why didn't you pack a mask? In my insulated little bubble in Perth, I had totally missed that when flying, which I had not done in a, in a year, and we are not wearing masks around town here for a long time. But one has to wear a mask when you fly. Being lucky on this day, two nice gentlemen saw the horror on my face as I looked around in slight panic. One of the gentlemen kindly asked me, excuse me, do you need a mask? Embarrassed and a little panicked as I was trying to think what I had in my bag that could be used as a mask. I finally found my words and say, silly me, yes I do. I to it totally slipped my mind. 
The gentleman smiled and said, well, this is your lucky day. I have an extra from my last trip with Qantas, so I hope you're flying Qantas. My heart slowly started to pick up the pace again after dropping to the ground. Yes, thank you so much. This surely is my lucky day. Now, you who know me know I, of course, started to tell the two gentlemen about why the trip was so important to me, about the visit to the refuge in Karatha and thanking them for saving my bacon so I could get on the plane. The smiles on the men's faces, their kind comments made me realise it was a good feeling for them too to have helped me. Once again, a reminder to me and us that there are good people everywhere and most people are happy to help others where they can. The flight and arrival to Karatha was seamless, though found out waiting for my luggage there is no Ubers in Karatha. So off I trekked to the taxi rank where I very kindly, where I was very, so off I trekked to the taxi rank where a very kind gentleman helped me with my luggage into the trunk. At the hotel I changed from my newly bought red dress and jacket into gym gear to walk around Karatha, bracket, I can still hear mum's voice for me to always travel professionally dressed, which I love to do. So no childhood dramas here. Everywhere I visited stores and companies, I was greeted with the most kind and helpful, helpfulness one could ask for. Beautiful people. On my last stop before heading back to the hotel, I dropped into Coles to pick up some groceries. Before, you who know me, who says, Becky, go treat yourself to some good food in the restaurant and a nice glass of wine and relax. I hear you and yes, it is nice to treat oneself every now and again. However, when I travel, I always try to save money where I can. It is my own hard-earned money most of the time. And when it is not my money, but grants such as the vocational training team exchange with the US or birthday presents from Rotary friends, so I could make the conference I needed to to make as I volunteer my heart out with great pleasure. My money or someone else's money, it is equally as important to make sure every penny is spent in the wisest way. So $39 from Coles covered most of my food and drinks for two nights in Karatha. Thursday, 3rd of November. After a good night's sleep, I woke up rested and ready to roll. As I watched the morning news, my heart was so filled with joy when I saw the magical news that the police have found the missing little girl, Chloe. Cleo, Cleo. Um, the little girl who had been kidnapped 18 days prior with camp, when, while camping with her family had been found by the police and was back in the arms of her mother. What magical news this was to start the day off for all Australians and bringing hope around the world. As Police Commissioner of Western Australia Chris Dawson said, we are so happy that we dared to hope. I was hoping to visit the police in Karatha on my visit to say hi and see how they are. However, the police was a bit busy, so they suggested I visit on my next trip, which I will take them up on. One day every fortnight, I spend half, sometimes a whole day, as a patron supporting the police recruits through their training at the Police Academy in Western Australia. This is a scheme organised between the Police Academy and the Order of Australia. I'm there to help support the recruits through. I believe I receive so much more in return, though. Thanks to the police officers, trainers, I have learned so much about what the police do and how much they face on a daily basis in the community. It is a joy to hear the passion the trainers have for their profession and see firsthand how they put so much effort into training the recruits to keep the community and themselves safe. The 18 months of the academy have strengthened my belief that I have had for many years from volunteering at the Salvation Army's Refuge Centre here in Perth of the importance to heal relationship between victims, survivors or family violence with the police officers. As victim survivors, women and children often meet the police in traumatising and stressful situations for both victim survivors, but also stressful for the police officers. We must never forget the police officers are our friends, family, neighbours, community members. Just like us, they are people, not robots. Imagine this. Imagine having recruits, police officers going through their training slash career mentoring children in the um, family domestic violence refuge centres, playing footy, playing board games, going to the water park uh, for a day to spend lots of energy and have lots of fun, building the bond of trust and friendship. So in the times of stress, fear, trauma, they, both sides, can reach out to each other. Imagine what a different future these children would have. Imagine the different perspective those police officers would have of victims of family violence.
Let's dare to dream and make it happen. Okay, I'm now getting carried away on things I'm very passionate about, but here is hoping. The afternoon of Thursday the 3rd of November had now arrived and my meeting with a colleague, my friend Christy Staples, Family Violence State Manager for the Salvation Army in Western Australia, had finally arrived. Christy, kind and helpful as she always is, she had offered to pick me up at my hotel and drove to the refuge. As always with Christy, there was great conversation and talk about everything from refuge and needs to how our sons are doing. The first stop where the plot of land... Um, the first stop where the plot of land where the Salvation Army are building their new state-of-the-art, culturally fitted refuge centre in Karatha. The build is mainly funded by the Federal Government of Australia. But I'm blown away with Christy and Warren Palmer's vision. It will be absolutely a magical place for women and children to heal as they rebuild their lives away from family violence into a peaceful home environment. From there, Christy then took me to the current refuge that had been newly renovated, purpose-fitted. This was done with the help of the funds from Path of Hope Gala, the renovation upgrade that would tie them over until the new refuge is built, aimed for 2023. May I report that the renovations they ha that had been completed with the funds from Path of Hope Foundation Gala was absolutely marvellous and so well spent. Warren and Christy have truly gone, done a great job refurbishing the old refuge to accommodate a healing, nurturing, empowering environment for the victim survivors of family domestic violence in the Northwest. Security upgrade. Warmed my heart to see the security upgrade, which is keeping the employees' clients safe as they work hard in this very high-risk, volatile environment. The security camera systems were great fit for purpose with mechanisms for the staff to safely and caringly bring the victim survivors into the consultation room. The consultation room is also securely located away from the accommodation area to keep the healing process and life rebuilding for people in the refuse as stable as possible. Units upgrade. It was a delight to see there is the same facility in the Salvation Army's Perth-based refuge, a unit for a staff member to sleep safely and securely or on their overnight shift, for the victim survivors to have access to support staff 24-7, which is a vital component in the first stage of healing support. Furthermore, I had the pleasure to see one room that had been renovated and purpose-fitted with storage cupboards, microwave and freshly painted walls. One of the units had been made handicap-fitted for wheelchair to access bathroom, kitchen and easily enter in and out of the unit. This unit was occupied so I was unable to see it but it sounded absolutely like a dream for someone who is, in a wheel, so who is wheelchair bound to be self-sustaining. Staff. Again, you who know me, the employee staff workforce is so important. If the staff is cared for, listened to, educated, upskilled and safe, then naturally it is much easier for them to do a job in this highly stressful, anxious environment. This flows on to better for the, this flows on to be better for the staff's families and the community and so on. The staff during my visit was friendly and had a great attitude to their work. With a manager like Christy, it does not surprise me one bit. Christy fights hard for her staff to receive the upskilling they require to stay safe and to give the best service possible. Hats off to you, Christy. Following the visit to the refuge, Christy dropped me back to my hotel. Christy was swamped with work, so I had to return to had to return to work before joining me for dinner at my hotel later that evening. It was great to hear more about the amazing work Christy and her team is doing and how Christy is developing her team with such a great multicultural attitude. Her up-and-coming manager at Graceful is a woman from Africa. Christy is over the moon with this woman's development and qualities she possesses that is vital for the role she is stepping into. Christy is as excited as I am about the Path of Hope Foundation Gala for May next year 2022. So we got to speak a little bit about it. We didn't get enough time, though, to talk about all the gala ins and outs, but hopefully having Christy attend, Ray Simpsons, who is the Perth Rotarian and Chair for the Perth Rotary Path of Hope Western Australia Committee, this will bridge that. Christy also mentioned she really was looking forward to working close with Ray in regards to the Women Women Mentoring Program, so this could be revitalised, not only in Perth, but introduce it to Karatha too. Again, here is Daring to Dream. Thursday became another magical milestone in Path of Hope's journey. 
meeting and talking to the people. Connecting with community is everything. My journey to Karatha didn't quite end here. I think this was just the beginning of something wonderful for Path of Hope in Karatha. So a second visit is a must and I will make sure I get to visit the Rotary Club of Karatha who, I already, who already is doing such a great work with the refuge. Folks, if you are a Karatha citizen or connected with Karatha, please contact us. We really would love your engagement an hour, a year, an hour a day, in-kind donation, funds and or attending a gala 21st of May next year. Every little bit toward our mission to heal our community together through Rotary Path of Hope. Where there is a Rotary and a Salvation Army, there can be a path of hope. So be the champion in your community. Together we break the intergenerational cycle of family domestic violence, healing our community. With much love to you all from my heart and Rotary service, I wish you a wonderful day. Becky.